Hey guys, it's Pastor Austin here with this week's Big Truth. So as you know, we're in our series of the fall. And so we're talking about sin. And we're talking about our state of sin. And, and also you know that at Guide 4, we introduce again our focus for this year. So if you guys remember from last time we left off in creation, our focus for this year for third, fourth, and fifth graders is eternity. So we take a look at each big truth in each series through the lens of eternity. So just kind of keep that in mind as we walk through the next several weeks together as third, fourth, and fifth graders to see where do we see eternity in our big truth and our Bible verse and our Bible passage for the week. So let's take a look at our big truth for this week. Our big truth this week is we are dead in our sin. We are dead in in our sin. You guys kind of see the eternity tie-in? Is that in our sin, we live forever as dead people. So let's take a look at where that's found in our Bible verse for this week. Our Bible verse this week is Romans 6.23, probably a verse that most of you guys are familiar with and that we've had before, but it ties directly to our big truth for this week. So Romans 6.23 says this, for the wages of sin is yeah, wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you guys see a couple things going on in there. You see our big truth that we are dead in our sin. You also see our focus of eternity. So let me read again with that in mind, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin, that means what we earn for sin is death. It's the path that leads to death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So our big truth this week is that we are dead in our sin. And we're going to talk about what that means, that we are spiritually dead. So I've got an object lesson for you guys this week. So if you take a look at this, this is a balloon, yes. But what is it a picture of, do you see on here? Yeah, it's a picture of the world. So if you take a look at this balloon, you kind of think about, um, go all the way back to creation and go back to the way that God created the world. God is the creator and he's the good creator. So everything God created is and was good. So we know that when God created the world, it was perfect. It was good. Everything was exactly right. It had life. And in fact, God created the first man and woman to live forever. That was his design. That was his plan. But then, just like what we're talking about in this series, something happened. And when sin happened in the garden, guess what happened? Yeah. God's creation was broken. And so what we see is there's a result. There's a lot of different consequences and results because of God's perfect creation being broken broken, kind of like the balloon blowing up. So you feel free to do that at home if you want. Um, so let's take a look at our four big ideas for this week that really unpack that big truth that we are dead in our sin. So first of all, we have to understand sin. Sin is not just doing something bad that makes us bad. Um, it leaves us spiritually dead. In our sin, we are spiritually dead. We do not have a relationship with God the Father, the author of all life. So we also have to know is that sin, being spiritually dead, affects every area and every relationship of our life. So we like to think that sin is just something I do bad every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm good. Well, that's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. For the wages of sin is death. And so we have to remember that that affects every part of us, every relationship, everything that we do and everything that we are. We are spiritually dead people. We also have to know is that spiritually dead people cannot raise themselves. If you're dead, there's nothing you can do. There's no moving, there's no nothing going on. You're spiritually dead, and so you cannot raise yourself back to life. You have to have someone do that for you. And that's our, actually our last uh, big idea for this week, is that we, I, you, we need resurrection, right? We need someone to resurrect us out of our spiritual death and into spiritual life. And so we're going to take a look at a Bible passage this week that kind of illustrates that in a pretty neat way. It's Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. 
very familiar passage, very interesting passage to read. So we see this is a vision um, that the prophet Ezekiel sees, and he sees a lot of dry bones that are on a valley that's extremely dead, extremely dry. And we see that through the power of the Spirit, God raises the dead bones and creates an army, puts them back together. And so we see that as an illustration of spiritual death and spiritual life, and it's only through the power of the Spirit. It's only through Jesus that we can be brought from our spiritual death to spiritual life. So take a look at Ezekiel chapter 37, really interesting passage to read, and may you guys uh, have a great week talking through that big truth that we are dead in our sin. So right now I'm going to send it to Mr. Brandon with our home hook for this week. Mr. Brandon here with this week's home hook. This week we're talking about our big truth, we are dead to sin. And today I want to talk about our big idea of our spiritual death affects every area and relationship of our lives. So what that means is sin that's in our lives affects everything that we do. You know, once we sin, we have those evil thoughts or evil actions in our lives, um, it affects our relationships. It affects your relationship with mom and dad. It uh, maybe even affects the relationships you had with friends at school. Maybe they say something to you and you're having a bad day or something and you just snap at them and you're rude, not very nice. Um, so just remember that sin affects every aspect of our lives. I've got an example of that for you today. You've got a coffee filter here and a cup of water. You know, once you dip the coffee filter in water and pull it back out, you begin to see that the, water, the coffee filter is soaking up the water. So the whole thing begins to become wet. Um, that's what sin does in our lives. Sin enters our lives at one point and it absorbs us. It takes over every aspect of our lives until we give ourselves over to God and accept Christ as our Savior. For our family challenge this week, I want you to go back and take a look at Pastor Austin's video. Um, take that balloon and a marker and draw the world on it. And uh, pop that balloon and begin to have a conversation about how sin separates us from God and that we are broken and lost. Hope you guys have a great week. And up next is Miss Kim with our Go Challenge. Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Kim with the Go Challenge. Together through Give to Go, our Tri Cities Baptist family um, gives to advance the gospel in five Go pursuits. And we have been talking about those five Go pursuits that send disciples, plant churches, and today we're going to be talking about serving the vulnerable. So what does that mean to serve, to serve the vulnerable? First of all, Miss Kim has trouble with that. So, But what it means is that um, we show the love of God to someone by meeting their special needs like special care, support, protection, and we do that um, with basic human needs. But we believe here at church that the only hope um, for renewing people is to bring them to new life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we have a special guest, to, uh, boys and girls, Miss Catherine uh, McGann. <laughs> See there, I told you we have a little bit of trouble, but she's going to talk to us about how her family serves the vulnerable. Okay, well, um, once a month our family joins other families um, from our church down in Johnson City, um, and we meet in Memorial Park and we pass out food boxes to families um, that are in need down there. And um, yes, the boxes meet that physical need, but um, what we really want is an open door to share the gospel, to share Jesus with those families in that community. Wonderful, wonderful. So do your kids go with you? Yes, I have three um, children. Um, they are 14, 13, and 10, and um, our whole family goes together. And it's a great opportunity just um, to teach them to love, and um, even for myself to teach me to love and to step out of my everyday life and routine to make it a priority um, to seek people out um, to see how we can um, meet their needs and share Jesus with them. Great, great, great. Um, so if you were going to tell the boys and girls today, what, what's something they can do to serve these people at a risk? Um, the first thing I would say is to keep your eyes open. Um, keep your eyes open to people that are in the community. 
Um, or even in your everyday life, maybe if you're at school, you know, who is that um, child in your class that needs a friend, that maybe plays alone at recess, or sits alone at lunch? Um, how can you meet their need would be one way. Um, the second thing is something that our family has done in the past is that we've um, created these little, we call them snack packs, and they have um, maybe like a water, granola bar, um, crackers, um, and we keep them in our van. And so if we see somebody in need in our community, then um, you know, we try and meet that need. We roll the window down or somebody even jumps out of the van to go hand it to somebody. Um, but it's just a tangible way that we can uh, keep our eyes open and see people and um, just try and meet those needs. That's a great idea. I see a lot of those people, you know, some of the um, ways I drive every day, there's certain people standing there. So that's, that's perfect. You're prepared to do something. Right. And the, the third thing I would say is you can always join us at a Memorial Park. We meet the third Saturday of every month. Um, if you want information on that, you can contact myself or um, Mr. John Burkett. He's on our elementary team. Um, he's the one that kind of heads that up. You can also contact him for information on that. But it's a great way just even to disciple our kids. Um, it's a great tool for discipleship. Great, great. Well, thank you for that. And um, boys and girls, you know, I always try to give you an example of myself, and um, I like serving the elderly. There are some ladies that I know that can't drive and can't get to the doctor, that can't get to the grocery store, so um, I go and help them out. And uh, so I encourage you and your families to, um, just as Catherine said, look for opportunities. They're there. We just have to find them. So, Together, we can pray, and we're going to do that before we leave, but we can also give. So um, give to our give to go, and we're going to send teams and families and individuals to serve those people who are at risk. All right, well, let us close in prayer. God, it is your gracious gift of salvation through Jesus that gives us new life. We cannot help ourselves, and we cannot help others without the Holy Spirit to guide us. Today we are asking that you would continue to bless Catherine and her family to be your hands and feet to share the gospel and meet the needs of those in our communities and all around the world. God, I pray that our church would be challenged to live generously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye. Bye.